Hi, I'm Shannon Holman. Uh, I'm joined today by Elliot Harmon from Creative Commons. Would you like to say hi, Elliot? Uh, hi, I'm very <laughs> excited to be here. Yeah, it's awesome. And then we also have a couple of guests that are going to be joining us a little bit later. So, um, yeah, to start off, I just want to take a second to thank everybody who's tuning in. Um, I've been the director at the Free Music Archive since October of 2014. I'm really excited to be in this position and part of um, the outreach and initiatives that we were going to do for this coming year was to make more educational resources. This is one of many and really excited to present to you this educational webinar on video um, and use of our tracks in videos. So I'm going to share with you a presentation and um, Elliot is going to help me present. So hopefully the Google Hangout cooperates with us and we're going to see how we do. Okay, um, Elliot, do you want to tell everybody what you do? Uh, yeah, I am the communications manager uh, at Creative Commons, uh, which means I do a lot of things, but one of my favorite things is opportunities like this to just chat with people about using Creative Commons licensing and hear people's uh, questions. Cool. So um, we're going to go ahead and start our presentation. Um, and in the presentation, there will be bits about FMA, bits about Creative Commons, and some more just kind of fun stuff. So stick around. OK, so this is Music for Video, as presented by the Free Music Archive and Creative Commons. Um, this is a really old video editing bus. If anybody's been doing editing for a long time, you might recognize this piece of equipment. Um, one of the people at WFMU, which is where the Free Music Archive is uh, located, recognized it and uh, sort of reminisced fondly about the CMX. Um, so the Free Music Archive was started as a repository for free and Creative Commons licensed music, including live recordings from WFMU and other radio stations and public domain tracks. So you can find a variety of things that are licensed in a variety of ways. Um, and as I said before, it's affiliated with and founded by WFMU, which is a non-commercial freeform radio station out of Jersey City, New Jersey. Um, they've been going for more than 50 years now, so they have quite a legacy. You can check out more information about them at WFMU.org. So Creative Commons, um, Elliot's going to take over in a minute, but it was established in 2002. Um, it gives a simple way to give other people permission to use your creative work. And um, Creative Commons licenses aren't an alternative to copyright. They work alongside copyright. So now Elliot's going to tell us about Creative Commons licenses. Uh, so yeah, as I said earlier, I'm really excited to be here, and I've this is exciting for me personally because I've been a fan of WFMU and the Free Music Archive for a long time. So it's it's neat to be able to speak on this webinar with them, uh, and also like I said earlier, one of my favorite things to do is just chat with creators about how CC licenses work and hear people's difficult questions, and most of the time not be able to answer their difficult questions, but uh, possibly point them in the right direction. This slide demonstrates essentially the problem that Creative Commons was designed to solve, um, which is that there is public domain and there is all rights reserved and never the twain shall meet. Uh, so let's unpack that a bit further. Uh, I assume most people here know what public domain means. That refers to works that uh, either are old enough that their copyright protection has expired uh, or are uh, for legal, whatever legal reason, not subject to copyright, including, for example, works created by the U.S. government. And I assume everybody here probably also has some kind of sense of what the phrase all rights reserved means, because that's a phrase that you hear so often. Um, that refers to work that all of the rights that are afforded to the creator of those works under copyright, uh, they are claiming, uh, meaning that in order to take your piece of music and use it in my movie or to take your uh, piece of uh, curriculum and share it with my classroom, I, I need to go out and ask for your permission. Um, and in the eyes of the law, uh, those are the only two options. All rights reserved is the default. It doesn't matter if you draw a little circle and a C uh, on your work. You create your work, you put your work out there in the world in, in a fixed form, uh, and it is automatically considered all rights reserved. Creative Commons was based on the idea that that dichotomy in which everything is either completely open or completely locked down 
uh, is very, very limiting, particularly in the age of the internet and what it's possible for people to do on the internet with other people's work. Um, and so this is what Creative Commons does. It creates this kind of gray area between uh, all rights reserved and public domain. Um, as Cheyenne mentioned earlier, uh, Creative Commons isn't anti-copyright. Sometimes people say that Creative Commons is sort of a, an alternative to copyright. It's really not. Uh, Creative Commons licenses are enforceable because copyright is enforceable. Uh, in its simplest form, what you're really doing uh, when you license a work under Creative Commons is you're giving people permission in advance uh, to use your work as long as they follow a couple of rules. Uh, these are the six licenses and CC0, which is our public domain tool, laid out from most open to least open. Um, and when you're deciding as a creator to license a work under Creative Commons, and we're talk, gonna talk a little bit later about actually how to do that, uh, there are really two questions to ask yourself. One is whether you want to allow other people to use the work commercially, uh, and the other is whether you want to allow people to be able to create adaptations of the work. Um, and if you allow them to create adaptations, whether you wanna require them to also license their adaptations under CC. And when you take each of those different possibilities, you end up with these six Creative Commons licenses. Um, so let's talk a bit about these rules of the licenses because, of course, those are the things that we get the most questions about. Uh, and I cannot answer every possible use case, but I can hopefully point you in the right direction. Um, and after doing this for a while, you, you get a pretty good sense of, of which uses are or are not allowed by a certain license. All six of the Creative Commons licenses include uh, what we what we sometimes refer to as the bathroom man, uh, which which is the symbol for attribution. Um, that simply means that as a licensee, as anybody wanting to reuse, let's say, a piece of music in a video, uh, you need to credit the licensor for their original creation. Uh, and as I mentioned a second ago, that rule, that requirement, is in all six of the Creative Commons licenses. Um, if you as a licensor uh, don't want to require that on people, um, then you, you can waive it, or you, 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 you could also think about using CC0, which is our public domain dedication. Uh, share alike. That means if you create an adaptation, asterisk, you must license your adaptation under the same license as the original work. Um, and the reason why I put an asterisk there is because this is one of the questions that we get a lot is what is or is not an adaptation. And the, the, the kind of weaselly answer that we give to that question is that actually we don't decide what is or is not an adaptation. What is or is not an adaptation uh, is actually a matter of copyright law and that can vary a bit from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. That's the lawyery answer. Here's the, here's the maybe slightly more practical answer. A work rises to the level of being an adaptation when it contains enough of your uh, contribution as the person who made an adaptation of it uh, to be its own new thing, uh, but it also contains enough of the original that, that, that it uh, is, is clearly based on the original. And for the purposes of Creative Commons licenses, uh, when you sync music to video, that is automatically considered an adaptation. So since that's what we're talking about a lot here, that's useful to know. Non-commercial, that means you as the licensee may not use the work in a way that's primarily intended for or directed toward commercial advantage or monetary compensation. And again, this is another one of the ones that comes up a lot is what is or is not commercial use. Um, and sometimes it's tricky, more often than not, if you really look at the use and look at what its primary purpose is, it's pretty easy to d discern whether it falls under non-commercial or not. If you have questions about whether your intended use is commercial, um, just like you have questions about whether your intended use is an adaptation, your easiest option most of the time is just to go back to the licensor directly because ultimately uh, the license is an agreement between you and them. Um, and uh, most of the time, licensors and licensees will kind of act in good faith and sort of figure it out together.
And finally, no derivatives. You may not create an adaptation of the original work. Uh, I already talked a bit about what, adaptation, what adaptations are, so I'll answer questions about that if they come up, but I think that that's mostly self-explanatory right now. Uh, and again, there are those six Creative Commons licenses uh, arranged from the most open to the least open. So possible scenarios um, include, but are not limited to, of course, if we're going to be lawyery, um, the skate video. Um, so you're making a video of your friend skateboarding and plan to put it online. You just want to share the video and aren't trying to make money. Um, so what kinds of licenses can you use for this? You know, clearly if you're not trying to make money, you could probably use a non-commercial license. And the most openly licensed thing is um, an attribution license, which is just the CC BY. Um, here is what I think. Um, anything licensed otherwise requires consent from the artist, so you would need to contact the artist themselves and see if uh, they are okay with you using other stuff. Do you have any thoughts or uh, ideas on those guys? Where it can sometimes get confusing is if like you're using one piece of music that's CC by SA and another one that's CC by NC or CC by NCSA, uh, then things can start to get wacky. Okay, so we'll move to the next one. Uh, scenario B, it's a documentary. So you're making a documentary film that you hope to take to the film festival circuit. If it's successful, you plan to market it. Um, so this is somewhat similar to the skate video, I think. Um, and the licenses that I suggested um, are, are actually just Creative Commons attribution and Creative Commons attribution share alike if you're willing to add that license to your work. Um, I didn't recommend non-commercial for reasons of potential marketing. Anything licensed otherwise would require consent from the artist. And you can market things that have a share-alike license on them. Is that is that correct, Elliot? Yes. <laughs> okay, so we'll move on to the next one. Scenario C, a commercial. You are making a commercial for your product. You want to use music that is freely available for use. What can you use? Pretty simple. Um, pretty much just attribution, and that is if you attribute the artist, uh, if you observe the terms of the license. So anything licensed otherwise requires consent from the artist and would probably require a license from the artist. Any thoughts on that, Elliot? Uh, no, I don't have any thoughts on that. I was actually just looking in my browser because I'm trying to remember there's a Creative Commons uh, hip hop artist who this just recently happened with not too long ago. Her music is being used uh, on in commercials for Honda, I think, or some major car company. Uh, it's Kelly Mays. You can read an interview with her on our website. Um, but it it's an interesting example of the kind of cool thing that can come out of Creative Commons is that uh, uh, people do want to uh, use your work, but then they also want to commission more of it and suddenly you have this big deal. Um, okay, so last scenario, class project. You're making a video for a class and you want to use a track from the Free Music Archive. You will not use the video to make money and are willing to share it under a Creative Commons license. So this scenario, I think, allows a little more wiggle room. You're not going to be using it for commercial purposes. You are willing to share it under a Creative Commons license. So what does that leave you? Creative Commons attribution, attribution non-commercial, share alike and non-commercial share alike. Um, and as long as you're willing to add the share alike license to your work, you can use anything that's licensed th that way. Um, anything otherwise, so anything with a no derivatives would uh, require consent from the artist to be used in the project. Uh, when you're choosing to license your work under Creative Commons, sometimes it can get confusing when you look at the list of all the different licenses, but it's actually a lot simpler than it looks. It really comes down to just asking yourself two questions. Uh, one is whether you want to allow adaptations, uh, and if so, whether you want to put the share-alike restriction on there. Uh, and two is whether you want to allow commercial uses. And that's it. Um, you, and that will result in one of the six licenses. And you can see this ha happen when you go to our uh, website, creativecommons.org slash choose. Um, this is also where you can 
put in all of your information to generate one of those cool little badges to put on your website or where, wherever you're publishing your work, including the title of your work and how you want people to attribute you and the URL that the work is going to be published at. Um, and if you are, if it is an adaptation of somebody else's work, uh, there's space in there for where you can uh, put that attribution to them as well. And it all results in, you know, just one of those nice little badges that you can embed on your website or, again, you know, wherever you're publishing it. Uh, so here, let's talk about what information you need to provide when you license your work under CC. Um, and it's... We'll talk about this a little bit more when we get into attribution later, um, but the attribution requirement uh, requires that licensees provide all of this information if you, as the licensor, provide it. Um, and that includes your name, the title of the work, the URL of the work, and which CC license it's under. Um, and you should always include the actual URL or the link to the license so that people can click through and, you know, uh, actually read the license and find out what rights you're giving them. Uh, we have a little page that gives more information about the right way to mark your work with a CC license, uh, and you can get to it at bit.ly slash CC marking. Um. As far as licensing things under Creative Commons on YouTube, it only offers a default Creative Commons attribution license. So if you have made any modifications to that license or if, they're, if you're licensing something under a completely different Creative Commons license, you have to note them in the credits in the description to be safe. Um, in cert, like search results and such will not be filtered by more elaborate Creative Commons licenses. If you're trying to search videos for, you know, um, by an CSA, you won't have very much luck. Um, if you're concerned about infringement by others, um, because CC BY is such an open license, you may want to attempt to clearly license your work as, you know, obviously as possible, or use another platform. Can I um, can I just quick before you go into Vimeo? Can I? Sure, yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. I just, I want to I want to quick underscore something that you said because I think it's an important thing for people to understand. Um, if you're licensing your work under a different license, one that's less open than CC BY, and you're publishing it on YouTube, uh, you really shouldn't use the, the CC BY marker in YouTube. Um, having said that, there's no problem with it being listed at, on YouTube as uh, all rights reserved, but then you having the license information in your description. That makes sense. Uh, thanks, Elliot. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to use an interface that allows you to have a little bit more uh, like finer control over how you uh, license your work, when you are uploading a video, um, you can go to the video settings and in the advanced video settings you can add captions, you can add photographs, you can make a custom URL, and you can also choose which Creative Commons license you want to use. I'm going to show you all a bit about how to look through the free music archive. Um, to start off, one of the easiest ways you can search for music on FMA is um, by genre. We have more than just this uh, sort of color-coded genre tree here. Um, if you search by genre and you click on blues, there will be some sub-genres there that you can choose from and look through as well. You can also browse by curator. Um, music for video, which is curated by us, um, music that's licensed for use in video, uh, meaning that it is licensed for potential use in potential videos, depending on how you're going to use the video. Um, the Creative Commons community page, um, other uh, net labels such as Blocksonic, um, arts organizations such as AS220, uh, labels such as Northern Spy, so that's pretty uh, diverse. We have a couple hundred curators and we're always growing. So the music for video page, if you click on it, uh, looks like this and it, like I said, has a couple of different um, components. One of the things you can do is look at the uh, recently added tracks to see what has been most freshly added to the music for video, um, but you can also search using a couple of different um, controls, which I'm going to go through, which work in not just music for video, but on the whole site. 
So this is the search page. Uh, you can find it by clicking your mouse into um, this bar on the upper right corner next to the Go button. And if you have nothing in it and you just hit Go, then everything that is on the site will come up and it's, it's usually sorted by the date added. So it will be the most recent stuff. Um, sometimes things are listed by genre um, on the side as soundtrack, so that might be a good place for you to look if you're looking for soundtracky sounding music. Um, things are listed by date, but you can also sort them by artist, track, album, etc. Okay, so I don't know if a lot of people recognize this, but you can search by beats per minute or BPM, as is uh, abbreviated here. Um, you can search by very slow to very fast um, to you know infinity beats per minute. Uh, so depending on if you have a specific sort of pace in mind, you can search by BPM. You can also search by license. We have made a filter for you so that you can uh, search by Creative Commons license if you want to search public domain tracks, if you want to search for things that allow for commercial use or use in a remix or a video, you're free to do that. Um, and then there are these little sort of hieroglyphs on the side. There's a down arrow and a plus sign. The down arrow is for downloading the track, and the plus sign is to listen in our pop-out player. A lot of people aren't sure what the plus sign means, and I highly recommend that you give it a try. Um, if you're listening on the page by clicking the black circle with the triangle in it, then you're going to listen to the track from start to finish, and it'll start playing the next track when that one's done. Um, so that works as sort of a very analog function. Um, the pop-out player is a little more dynamic. If you look for a specific artist or you happen upon a specific artist, um, you'll find that they have a page that will have the artist, a picture of the artist, and then their discography, which for purposes of the FMA is not exhaustive typically. It's just what we have on the Free Music Archive. So in this case, um, this wind quintet has one album and um, Here's their picture and the one album that we have for them. Below you'll see the curator, um, which is the person that uploaded the album, uh, who chose it, and who may be a good contact if you can't get in contact with the artist. Um, if the artist has listed a website, it's there. Any kind of location or other information um, that may be available. You can also see an upload information on the right side, um, how many listens, how many streams, uh, how many downloads, um, and how many times people have starred or favorited that album. Um, if you want to contact an artist, which you may want to do if you're trying to license something beyond the scope of what is allowed according to their page on the Free Music Archive, you can do a web search. Uh, when people ask me to help them find contact information, I pretty much uh, just do a pretty exhaustive web search. Um, look for website the website listed um, or search for the contact on the Free Music Archive page or on the band's website. You can also sometimes find an email this artist button or a contact link on an artist page. So, And some of them specifically please contact me. So people who are more open to that, artists who are sort of expecting that or who have had good uh, experiences with that will have information listed for you. Um, to find out what the license is on a piece of music, um, oftentimes whole albums will be licensed the same way. That's not always the case, especially in compilation albums. Certain tracks may be licensed in different ways. So you want to click on the license and more info bar at the bottom right of the page, and it will reveal to you what the license is. Um, if you wanted to use this piece, it's a uh, license under a an attribution share alike uh, license, which means that you can use it for things that you know would only require attribution, and for you to share it um, under the same license if you were to make a derivative work. Um, and then we're going to talk about attribution. Um, Elliot, do you want to tell us about attribution? Uh, so earlier I was talking about the information that you should provide when you uh, license your work under Creative Commons, the title, the URL, etc. Those also closely mirror the things that you should provide when you're attributing the creator of a work that you're using in your, in your video. <clears throat> the title, 
the author, the source, which is usually a URL, um, and the license, uh, which, which of the CC licenses it's under. Um, and it, it actually says in the CC license that all of these can be provided in a manner that is reasonable to the medium in which you're working. Um, and that's because, you know, lots of different communities, including uh, filmmakers, have their own kind of uh, expectations for what an attribution is going to look like. And the CC license simply says, look, you can you can attribute in, 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 in the way that is reasonable in, in the medium you're working in. Um, there was something else I was going to say about this. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then also earlier when I was saying, you know, if you ever have a question about whether your work qualifies as commercial use or not, most of the time your easiest option is just to contact the licensor. Uh, you, most people who use CC licenses kind of do it in good faith, and it's just easy to have that conversation with them. It's the same with attribution. If you have a question about how they'd like to be attributed, uh, whether you sh whether they want the URL included in the attribution, you know, the easiest option is, is just to drop them a note. And we have a page with more information about that. You can get to it at bit.ly slash ccattribution. Um, so, yeah, the best practices for attribution in video uh, include that information in the credits, just like you would see in a feature film. I would add to that, uh, if you're publishing something online somewhere, uh, include it in a text form there with the link back to the place where it's shared, uh, be it in the description of the video on Vimeo or, or, or on whatever website you've published it on. Uh, you know, just put those things in a format that it's easy for people to click back to the original. Um, Oh, and I guess, yeah, in, in the description slash caption for video on the web. Um, and like I said earlier, if you're not sure how the licensor would like to be credited, ask them. Um, That's always a good default. If you don't know, you should just ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and ask them. Don't ask us. We like, we like getting questions, and we like kind of hashing through issues with people. But at the end of the day, what really, really matters is that the license is an agreement between the licensor and licensees. Um, so, you know, just reach out to people. It doesn't cost anything. Yeah. Um, a couple of examples here. We actually have one um, Kevin McLeod made. Um, it links back to his website, which is where all of his music is, and the Creative Commons license that it's under. Um, you can find videos like this on various um, video platforms around the web. Um, and some people... Uh, during their credits will also say all images and music used to create this work were licensed under Creative Commons licenses. That's not really sufficient, um, but later in the credits they do give specific examples, which is better. Uh, making a blanket statement like this I don't think would give anybody enough information to find the works if they wanted to use them or to um, really have any information besides like, oh, they use this thing and okay. Um, so try to be, you know, a good um, sharer and let people know where you got your stuff from. So, for example, this person gave the name of the artist and what sort of license it was uh, shared under. Uh, and then they also give a list of attributions. Um, other places to find music if you really just um, are having trouble with FMA or the selection isn't what you're looking for, um, Creative Commons has a search um, function on their site that searches a lot of content across the web. Gemendo is a site that we've mentioned before. Um, Vimeo has a music store that's connected to FMA and a couple of other places. Um, CC Mixter, SoundCloud, um, and then Freesound isn't really a soundtrack place, but it might be a good place to find Creative Commons licensed sound effects. Um, there's a lot of uh, recordings of people crunching on crunchy food and dogs <laughs> howling and kind of really fun things that if you are really strapped for time or you just cannot get to a harbor to get that boat bell just right uh, recording, then you can probably find it on Freesound. Um, there's also some stuff on Wikimedia and there's also a Creative Commons um, page that's that's about this that has some more uh, stuff listed. So yeah, um, this presentation will be shared on SlideShare under a, an attribution license. And if you have questions, you can email me at contact at freemusicarchive.org. Um, if people have questions for me, they can definitely email me uh, at elliot at creativecommons.org. Um, uh, 
I, I, I guess I will also jump in and say that, uh, you know, these issues about uh, that copyright law should actually benefit everybody and not just a few people. And, you know, you know, there are, there, there are big issues at play under the surface in this discussion that I would encourage people to uh, get out there and learn more about. Stay tuned to our blog at freemusicarchive.org um, or stick around our Twitter page, which is at freemusicarchive without an E. Um, and, yeah, I think that's all that I've got for you guys. So um, unless anybody else has closing comments or anything else, uh, I think that's it. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Bye. Yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in and thanks for everybody who was a guest today um, and for people who were chatting alongside our YouTube and tweeting at us. We really appreciate it. So we'll see you next time.